Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome to Rebels Cast. My name is Jonathan, and joining me as always is Mickey. Hello. Um, except for last time. Except for last time, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I was sick. Yeah. Um, so, um, just us tonight, which is cool. Yep. Um, okay, so, and we'll try not to do... Uh, didn't we i know one time we did like an hour or something didn't we yeah i don't we can't do that tonight <laughs> yeah me either i i have some going going home for the weekend going back to dc i mean not for the weekend for the week and for a lot of reasons i just can't do an hour so we'll probably just keep it under 40 minutes i, I yeah, think because that's what we that's what we've done a talk, lot you get us talking about star wars it's very hard for us to stop yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll try to be good yep okay so this episode is um, Rebel Resolve, and it's directed by Justin Ridge and written by Charles Murray and Henry Gilroy, and who is not who has no relation to, as far as I know, to Dan Gilroy, the writer and director of Nightcrawler, which is a fantastic movie that I recommend. I have not seen it yet, but I look forward to it being on DVD. It is on DVD. Is that DVD already? Yeah, it came Let's out. Do every day. Came out like on February 9th or something. So, yep. Hmm, I will have to check that out. Yep, check your local library. We try to go. See, my roommate and I try to go see it, but we just never made it. Yeah, try to check your local library. That's what I've. That's what I, I use my school library to get a lot of my movies. <laughs> you know, because it's free. <laughs> um, at home, it's we much. Use it's my, at, at, at my um, at my home uh, where my my family lives in D.C. The problem is, is that there's like such long waiting times because it's the Arlington Library System. So there's like, I mean, even though there's like 20 copies of Boyhood, there's like 200 holds on it. Oh you know? Jesus! And and same thing with a lot of the other Oscar nominated movies. I don't really know how. I think somehow it just like somehow catches on and people just check it, and then before you know it, I mean, I think I was able to like get on the list yeah. of John Wick, and now I'm number six. You know, and there's probably like a hundred people <laughs> like on the waiting list now, but it's just crazy. I think we're finally up to like number eight for Guardians of the Galaxy because my mom likes all the. She's like seen I think all the MC movie MCU movies up to Winter Soldier. Um, that's okay. the last one she she watched it on the plane when we went over to um, France. Watched on that little teeny screen, and so um, but, yep. Um, well, she'll, she'll, she'll like Guardians. It's fantastic. I saw it many times. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Um, I know a lot of the episodes have been, you know, we've Stephen Lee has been involved, you know, in director, I guess, writer. Mm-hmm. You know, so. And uh, same thing with, um, not Simon Pegg. Um, Simon Kinberg. <laughs> Simon Kinberg. <laughs> oh, I wish Simon. Freaking Pegg. Pegg. <laughs> Love that man, but yeah, I, but I like how the different directors maintain the tone and where it's there's a lot of continuity. Whereas in like some live action shows, it's a new director kind of changes the feel of the show. Oh, but by I the way, feel the, oh, by the way, um, what about nine hours ago? Um, Le- Leonard Nimoy, uh, yeah, passed away so. Yeah, it was very sad. At the age, at the age of 83, 83, so. And he had uh, COPD, 
uh, oh. chronic obs- uh, obstruction uh, pulmonary disorder, and it's it's a horrible disease. And I know many people who are diagnosed with it. But a lot of them are smokers, uh, but he wasn't. And it's just, it's very sad. He was a great ambassador for science fiction and for fans. He was always available and accessible. He, he you know, I'm not a Star Trek fan. Um, I like the J.J. Abrams ones, but um, I was, I never got into Star Trek. Um, but he was the part of Star Trek that I always loved. So I was, him and Scotty. Um so it was a sad day for me. I he he will be missed, and I think even more than he ever thought he would be, because his footprint and handprints are all over so many things, not just Star Trek. So. Right. And the Ballad of Bilbo Baggins. I will never forget that. <laughs> the what? If you haven't seen it, YouTube Leonard Nimoy Bilbo Baggins on one of his albums in the late '60s, early '70s. I want to say he sings. A- a song called the ballad of bilbo baggins <laughs> and it's the most psychedelic video like it's it's him singing with all these little people these like kids and and it's a song about the, the hobbit from the book and so uh that was one of the first things i ever saw him do besides uh the original star trek series when i was little my dad watched it cool stuff so, so. yeah so he's he's gonna be missed he was a great a great great man and um great philanthropist and a great icon he's he's an icon of science fiction and of film yeah i thought some prayers go out to all the family members that, absolutely um, you know all, also, also the big kids. you know plus all the the big tr- the trekkies who are you know yeah. feeling it much bigger than we are you know so yeah um including the uh including nick and josh who are big i think they would be considered themselves trekkies but i don't know so, okay, so back to the episode. Um, so, um, like a lot of the episodes we have, you know, we got we got a you know pretty big callback uh, to mm-hmm. em- to Empire and it was uh, oh yeah uh, the Battle of Hoth, darn, 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 you know, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh god, yeah. You know, and um, you know, we didn't have some. You know, we didn't have like big ones, but we did have some chicken walkers, or you know, or like you know, like the generation before the ones right. in the Empire. Like, yeah, the, these ones looked a little bit like face on. They kind of look like chameleons, like not the legs, but like the main body. It kind of looked like a chameleon's head with those bulging things on the side. And I was like, that is such a cool design. But my heart will always belong with the ATSTs of. Uh, of my childhood, but there was pretty cool design. <laughs> yeah. And I always love any kind of flash to, uh, the original trilogy. Yeah. Um, I like, we got to see, um, chopper flying, which is pretty cool. I know we had, <laughs> I loved it. And we haven't really, and there was another scene and that we saw that we'll see him later, but you know, before this, I'm trying to think. We I haven't s- seen him do that. Oh, no, we haven't at all. Okay. It was like in, what was it? Episode three. Uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith when we saw R2 do that. And it was like, wait, when did he learn to do <laughs> why, has, why didn't he do that in the trilogy? No, wait, I he... remember sitting in the movie theater going, R2 can fly? <laughs> no, it was in uh, Attack of the Clones. It was in Attack of the Clones, right. I knew it was one of the other. I kept thinking of the, the elevator cra- uh, pit, uh, th- drop in, after they rescued uh, Palpatine, after Anakin and Obi rescued Palpatine, I kept thinking of the elevator drop, but for some reason I've put transposed R2 flying into that scene. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, it's so cool, astromech droids have this. Because I'm pretty and sure, because I'm pretty sure in that episode of um, Clone Wars, R2, uh, when he was damaged, he like lost the, lost his ability to do that, lost his yeah, uh, remember, parts or something. That kind of, kind of, I like how they're able to kind of say, well, this happened, so that's why you don't see it in that movie. <laughs> that's right. why he doesn't do it. I just so it was really fun to see Chopper uh do something different and as always his attitude and his his snark. He's got such a snarky little attitude for a machine. Right. So, and you can almost kind of tell what he's saying nowadays. We now we can kind of like oh, we can kind of get the gist of what he's saying cuz sometimes the the noises sound kind of like words. I don't know if that's just cuz we're so used 
used to him talking now or beep booping, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I Chopper was to me, he was like the best part of this episode. Yeah. And whenever and he put the, um, the subtitles on, sometimes they give like, um, like more of a detail kind of thing of what he's saying. Like it'll say like, um, like complaining. Uh, I think one time it said like, uh Oh, you know, so, which is, so it's kind of cool. I mean, most of the time it just says droid language, you know, or just kind of like almost, um, like a whining or, or something like a annoyed or something, but it's kind of, most of the time it's pretty, they don't really know. They don't exactly know how to sub him, but at times it does, they do art specific, which is always cool. That is cool. So, um, so, you know, and we also kind of had this kind of call back to, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi, you know, them trying to get inside, get inside the, the walker. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. I, it, it was very indoor moment with, uh, Zeb up there, much like Chewbacca was. Though, in, though I was waiting Jedi. for him. Though I was waiting for him to drop in, but he never did. No, I, I'd take it. I like, you know, I was like, is he gonna go in upside down like Chewie did? Because that was my first thought when I saw him on top of the of uh, the chicken walker. Was is he gonna do that Chewie thing? But I'm kind of glad he didn't because that's, you know, that's Chewbacca's thing to yeah, would have been put his head in upside down. Would have been a bit on the nose too much. Yeah, <laughs> but to have, you know. And these were kind of they uh, the position of the pilots of the ATST were was different than the um, original trilogy version because in the original trilogy they sit side by side, and this when they look like it was like an Apache, almost like an Apache helicopter almost. There's one in the front and one behind. Right. So I like seeing how these things evolve to what we're most familiar with, and then Chopper just getting in there. Yeah, trying to find want, some being. Being stubborn and not wanting to leave. He's yes. Like, no, I can do this. Yeah, I mean, because he's most of the time he's pretty successful, but it's just like you know, I think the problem is is that these systems are so secure, and trying to access it from a chicken walker is, you know, you know, much harder it's than be a, much harder than right. say like a um, than a destroyer, you know, right. or some other kind of larger ship. Well, plus. They explained that the network was down too. So, but he was just so stubborn. He wasn't, he was like, I'll stay here till they get it back up if I have to, kind of thing. Right. Um, and finally, they had to go in and Zeb had to go in and get him out. Right. I like the part where it's kind of like, here, uh, Zeb, take this. <laughs> you know, and you, and you just see like, you just see like an arm sticking out. And it's just like, yeah. it's like, it's just like, so it's, it's not even like, take this, take the guy, take this guy. It's just like, take this it's just like this person is just an it this you know yeah. it's just yeah, like chopper. throws them out and just uses it as a projectile which is just cool yeah chopper's not much of a uh, a people per person no <laughs> he likes the people he's with yeah i, I kind of thought maybe he would like you know shock them yeah like sometimes he does but you know it's kind of cool he doesn't seem to do that he, yeah he's he's got the little hand yeah that's even cooler um, and of course, like, and you know, this is starting to become a pattern where like they're hijacking these different um, imperial um, vehicles and such, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, please stand out, you know, you know. and then they'll give them a lot of, then they'll give them a lot of opportunity, obviously, because it's a road walker, rogue walker. Right, and I like that they don't have them be. They're not. It's like they jump in, and they're not experts at piloting these things. It's like you've got a fifteen-year-old kid. At the yeah, at the controls of this gigantic we walking weapon, basically, he's making mistakes, and I like that. Right. I like that. It's like, oh yes, I'm so I'm such an expert at this. I'll use the force to. It's like no, it, he's just a screwed up. He's just a screw up of a kid. And poor Zeb stranded up there, having to take all the gunfire or blaster fire. Right. And of course, you know. Um... Zeb is just trying to hang on with his, I mean, he's probably, <laughs> probably the one that's the most able to, you know, because, you know, because he's got those feet that can kind of grab on, yeah, you know, but yeah. still, he can only do so much, you know. I mean, of course, right. you know, Sabine's pretty good. I mean, she's very agile and stuff. Right. You know? So everyone and kind of has their own little thing. Yeah, they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses, which is good because you, you need weakness to, you know, 
highlight your strengths. But and then I just love how easy it was for them to get back on the ghost. I was like, that's really kind of cool <laughs> that that back part just fly, just came down and they were able to just get back on it. I don't think we've ever seen a ship do that in motion. Right. And I I really like some of the ships, uh, like the gunships that they showed in some of the pre- in the pre- previous episode. Oh yeah. They were so Attack of the Clones. That oh yeah. Open air yeah. thing that Tarkin was. On. I was kind of hoping to see more of that, but I really like that we got to go into you know more into space, and fi- when we you know figured out where Kanan was being held. Right. So you know I like we that a lot. so we do see Tarkin again and kind of. <laughs> And we see that, you know, this is a torture, a torture scene. So we get another kind of, well, I mean, it's a lot different than like Han being tortured, you know. Right. It, it's it, the same kind of apparatus. It's got the needle on it, but it well, of course, didn't that w- look as like wholly evil as the one in the movie because it had all those movie. The one in the movie had all those moving parts. And but it was definitely it was like, oh, oh I mean, of course, the needle like, would have been like Princess Leia. <laughs> yeah. Versus Han where it was like that. And where that thing kind of opened up and like came right to his face. Um, but it reminded me, me of both of, it reminded me of both of those things. They didn't apparatus. even ask they didn't even ask me any questions. Any I feel ter- I feel terrible. <laughs> I can't see, I can't see, Dewey. Uh, we can we could we could go on and on forever. <laughs> going back and forth quoting the movie. So oh, of course. Okay. Um so, you know, it's like, well, Governor, someone's got to keep you entertained, you know, and it's just kind of, um, yeah, it's just, well, they, it's just really they cool. They just really were not, they were not getting Kanan to break, and I thought that showed a lot of strength on his part, and how Tarkin just didn't believe, you know, he was a real Jedi. Um, that part, I thought, you know, it was, it was like, is this dude in denial? Or is it just because he thinks that Vader hunted them all down? Um, obviously, he didn't because we have Kanan. But uh, to, to be, I mean, he was like triple teamed. Poor Kanan strapped to that platform. And he's like, he's got the Inquisitor. He's got uh, sideburns. And he's got Tarkin there. I mean, it's like, and yet he's still held fast. And it was just, it was a really cool scene in that torture scene. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, and then, you know, and they kind of keep going kind of taking it to the next level, you know, all sorts of things. Yeah. When, especially my favorite part, I think one of my favorite parts of the whole episode, but my favorite part involving like that part of the story was when the inquisitor was kind of doing like messing with Kanan's head and like causing him pain. And then Kanan just, and then when his eyes open and he looked up at him, I was like, that was like the buzzing of a fly to him. And he was like, that was just the coolest move. Just that look in his eyes and just like, yeah, it was like, you think you can mess with me? I think not. And then came the lightning. Um, <laughs> and then we we're screwed. Yes. Um, but of course, before, you know, we kind of get this after the missions kind of this kind of thing has failed. We do get some. The return of Fulcrum and a, yeah. and a cloak, you know, and we're still kind of not quite sure. You know, we have our theories about who it could be, but still kind of the same voice. And he's right. Is it Ezra's dad or is it? I mean, he has a very whoever Fulcrum is, very distinctive voice. And really before, I mean, we'd only really seen this person. I think we hadn't really seen this person. I don't think I think right. it was just we just heard their voice. Right. And they were, you know, obviously with Hera mentioning Fulcrum, but this, I mean, when we, we see the hologram and I mean, it's very much like Darth Sidious a little bit in the fact, in the sense that you only see him from the side or, um, but I was very taken by how Ezra was singled out. And that's what kind of made me think this is maybe someone, maybe it's one of his parents or maybe it was someone who knew his parents and a had promised to protect him if something happened. And I just, I felt it, you know, we have to keep all the rebels safe. And he goes, you have to, and Ezra was singled out, I think two or three times by Fulcrum. So right. I don't even know if Hera knows the connection to that. Uh, or if she does, she's really good at keeping it a secret. 
But she did know stuff. She did say she knew things, but Ezra didn't want to hear it. So Right. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, we know Harakon knows the most, and she knows the mission, and I think she was trying to convince, you know, Fulcum, come on, let's, let's, we really need to get Cain, but she's just kind of like, you know, you guys have kind of outed yourself a little bit, but we can't really get you, we really don't want you to get out any further, you know, we need right. to, because your, really your goal was to kind of stay under the radar, and not, right. and then to like, you know, reveal yourself at the right time, when they start, you know, getting a much bigger rebellion with the end game, of course, right. of A New Hope. You build your troops up, you build your, your, your base up before you go public, and that way you have something to, to defend and you have different people who, you know, you have enough to make it a fair fight, so to speak against the empire. Um, and yeah, it, I think they pretty much outed themselves in a, a big way. Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, I think it's definitely good that we got some more fulcrum and just kind of, you know, I think it's, you know, I think it's kind of raised the stakes whenever, you know, a new force user joined it. And the fact that if, you know, if you lose, Another person, you know, it's definitely risky, you know, and the fact that she's saying now hope could be lost, you know. Right, which is a nice, also little wink and a nod to A New Hope. I thought it was cool. And then um, I love how, who they had to go to for help. I just was was like, oh, my God, it's a dead brownian. (laughs) When they realized they needed help to get up to to where Kanan was, or to find out where Kanan was. <coughs> they had to go to the Broken Horn. Right. Um, you know, and it's just, you know, you have to stop searching for Kanan, you know, and go into yeah. hiding. I mean, that's just kind of a, a big, because, you know, just this last episode, you know, they were using, they were broadcasting. Or no, no, two right. episodes ago, I suppose, right? I, I, I the last that. episode, because oh. we had a week in between. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um and of course Where they, they made the they got to the communications tower and uh, they started broadcasting from but then the empire shut it down you know and i think in should, a big way. And, and you know and and and, but uh, and, sh- and shooting down the tower was kind of a double edged thing it's just like you know the empire lost their communication but you know the rebels they also lost the ability to like you know broadcast or to you know, jack in like they were trying to into that walker, you know? So right. I think it's just kind of a kind of a win for both people, but also a lose for both people. So it kind of... Yeah, and then the Empire, you know, we find out that they are blaming the rebels. Right, and it's just like, it. you know, it's not true. It's like, you know? oh, cause, right, it's like, we didn't do that. You know, we, we plugged into it, but... I mean, that would have been a, that would have been a pretty big and thing. That was to, the Empire. You know, I mean, I, mean, I suppose if they... You know, we're at the bottom of the tower and they kind of blew it up, but, you know, I don't think the, you know, or the ghost, like, fired a lot of stuff at it, but, you know, I think it's more likely. If it was just, like, one shot, I I believe, right? It seemed like it was just, like, one or two shots, because then, boom, it just went down, because their firepower is just It was just, like, one really big, yeah. Yeah, it was one really big shot, and then, of course, it's, it's to the Empire's benefit to say, look what the Rebels did. They're cutting off your communication. They, you know... Oh, it's it's just more propaganda for the empire to blame everything on the rebels now that they're more public and the more public you go the the more followers you get and the more places you can reach so, yeah, so the empire's got to shut it down so of course sabine is you know kind of talking more about a complex like always in front of the at the table <laughs> you know it's definitely yes. starting to become a pattern you know in her kind of you know, moving her, you know, waving her hands and like looking around. And now, of course, we're looking at a thing of Lothal, the planet Lothal. Um, right. And the fact that he's probably still in the Imperial Complex, which is, you know, a good bet, you know. And of course, you know, they kind of have plans. The fact that, you know, we'll see later that it's not quite working and they'll have to take it to the next level. And of course, we know Vader is going to be in the next episode. So. Oh, yeah. I am so excited to see him again. The finale. I can't believe the season is like o- almost over. Yeah. Yeah. First season is one episode away. Yep. This was the penultimate episode. It's, still, it's so weird. It's like it seemed to go by so fast. Yep. Of course, the next season will be a, a bit longer, a little bit longer. It, yeah, we've it, it's proved itself, so they'll they'll be doing more. Right. Um. You know. So it's just like. 
And of course, you know, everyone kind of has a different opinion about the situation. It's the fact that, you know, Zeb's like, dude, he's, he's, we know he's good as gone. You know, I'm just like, come on, have a little more faith. I mean, right. he, he is a Jedi after all. Yeah, but I think that's, that's a kind of a thing for Zeb is, it's like, it kind of, he tends not to show that he's emotionally invested in these, in this group of people. So he's a little more dismissive. But on the inside, he's a, he's a teddy bear on the inside. He, he totally is. He's a total Chewbacca on the inside, where he's tough on the outside and just a big puddle of goo. Um, I think it, it's a protection. You know, it protects him from being hurt. Um, I, you know, a I mean, lot of humans espe- do I mean, especially after but, he lost his um, whole people. If he knew it, right. If you knew, I mean, if he knew how, you know, exactly where to go to find Kane, and he would have been the first one leading the charge if he was if Kane was somewhere where they knew he was they didn't have to kind of figure out where he was with the help of uh the broken horn uh group but he's I don't know he doesn't want to seem invested in people right so it's, it's, it's you know you kind of I mean you kind of understand it right and of course we know that Ezra you know because now that now Ezra's gotten stronger in the force he's able to like sense things and he kind of has this feeling and of course mm-hmm. other ones people who don't have the force they kind of are just they, they it's hard for them to kind of like you know just make a plan based on a feeling you know right and of course he, the a jedi's feeling is more than a feeling it's actually there's some truth behind it that's what makes him a jedi I mean, I think Ezra says, you know, we usually, we do it all the time. I think the thing is, is that they're a little more likely to, you know, more likely to believe in Kanan, you know, mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. Ezra, who has, you know, only been at this for, you know, just not very long, you know. Right. He's not quite a Jedi. I mean, he's, it, you know, I know later in this episode, he says he's a Jedi. Like, so he says, you're, yeah, yeah, I am. And I'm like not really <laughs> you're still a padawan you're not a jedi yet but i think you know he's getting there he's picking up more and he's he's showing more and more traits of a true jedi and um he'll get there eventually if if he survives the rebellion right and of course Hera is kind of has to pass this message on from fulcrum and doesn't really she doesn't really kind of say oh yeah fulcrum said this because she's still trying to keep them in the dark you know, but just to kind of, right. just to kind of like, you know, I mean, I think I'm sure they suspect that, you know, she's kind of, it's not just completely her decision. This is the fact that it kind of, she, you know, there's a good chance they think that, oh well, yeah, maybe she's talking to someone else about, you know, this, this overall, this grand plan, because yeah. they know there's a grand plan, but they still, you know, it's just, you know, Kanan is just a big part of it. And they just feel like, you know, they need to get him to be, for this whole thing to succeed. Right. And I think she, you know, she's kind of torn between um, what Fulcrum and they, what they want and what she would do if she was his mother. You know, her instinct is to take care of him. But she's also, you know, loyal to the the burgeoning rebellion. So she's she's pulling she's being pulled in a lot of different directions. And I think there's some things that she maybe doesn't agree with that. And I think maybe as we go along she'll find things that she starts to go and just trust her own instinct rather than doing what the, what Fulcrum wants. What's that saying about, um, for the few of the many or something? What is it like? Uh, uh, you sacrifice the few for the good of the many. Yeah. Something. Um, and it's fact- like if you, if you can save hundreds by sacrificing five, then you do it because Yes, that it would be a loss, but you're also ensuring the survival of more people. So, um, and I think Hera's of that opinion of that, you know, believes that like she's if she she goes down doing what she's doing, it's for the good of the rebellion. Right. And of course, you know, Ezra kind of thinks that, you know, he'd do whatever, Kanan would do whatever he would do to protect us. And you know, I think it's just kind of a thing that they're hard to, it's hard for them to accept, but in a way, you know, by, you know, by sacrificing himself and by, you know, stabbing that, you know, through the, through the door and lock and, you know, jamming the lock, you know, the, the mm-hmm. door and everything, he really just kind of, you know, kept them busy, you know? Right. Right. You yeah. Know? And I think it's just, you know, he already did. So, 
and he want, you know, and they, you know, he wants us to honor the choice he made, you know. And it's, right. Yeah, um, it's you know, Kanan does things for a reason. Nothing he does is impulsive or without thought. So we have to, you know, respect what he wanted to do and his intentions were. Right, and I think you know, and of course, and you know, this is one of those few episodes where you know, um, where Chopper is not as much of an a hole. You know, the fact that he's kind of <laughs> he's kind of sad. He's like, you know, he's kind of worried. He's kind of kind of bummed out that you know he's like, it's gonna be okay, boy. You know, yeah, it's like yeah, a do- it's like talking to a about... dog or a cat. Yeah, or it, whatever. Is, it is. He's worried about Kanan, and then he, but he also goes against Hera. You know, he tricks her. He's part of the. You know, the little subterfuge that Sabine and Ezra kind of cooked up to um, take the the Phantom and go and try to find some help. Right. And I think it's just kind of, it's just like, uh, it's interesting how, like, Ezra's kind of like, you know, I need some uh, power cells. And, like, you know, and they kind of just go <laughs> with it because it's just like, you know, we don't know anything about lightsabers and such who knows we we don't know what you need and it's just kind of yeah. like and plus we know and plus his is like a combination of a gun of a stunner and a lightsaber so we don't know what kind of maintenance this thing requires right. you know it, so. it was totally uh you know i didn't catch what they were doing until they got into the phantom and it was like oh that was they planned that okay that was pre- that was cool because i mean it wasn't something out of the ordinary for him to be asking for and, you know, he is a kid, so, of course, a kid's not going to look everywhere they should. So, of course, Sabine had to go help him, and then Zeb went and helped. And then, you know, we got into a little trouble. You know, I'm wondering <laughs> if, like, because, you, know, you know, when Zeb said, you know, really, why do I need to? I mean, was he, like, faking, or was he really in the dark and just kind of, that's what he would say anyway? You know, I'm kind of wondering about that. I don't know. I think he was, I don't think he knew what was happening. Because I mean, it'd be kind of weird. He probably would have screwed something up or told Hera. Yeah, I think I think it was I think it was he, don't tell him till the very last second <laughs> what we're doing because otherwise he'll blow it, he'll tattle to Hera, or he'll you know he'll try to talk us out of it or something like that. But you know, Chopper and Sabine and Ezra pulled that off pretty and, well. And you know, I think it's hard a lot of times for. I mean, it just seems like you know, even though. You know, Zeb is much older than CB, and you know she still has this almost like um, aggressiveness and just like, come on, let's go. You know, it's just yeah. kind of like, just, you know, and he, and he just doesn't really put up a fight. It seems like he's just like, okay, you know, yeah, okay, okay. yeah. He's, I think he once he figured out what was going on, he was with, he was, he was on board. Right. He's like, oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, oh, we're going, to, we're going to try to find a way to help Kanan. Gotcha. So, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so they go and they visit Sicatro. Uh, Cic- yeah, I would like to mention, like, I know I mentioned earlier that they subbed Chopper, like, complaining, and I kind of have the exact at the um, the 1434 mark says, in, and so it says, groaning, comma, complaining, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's just like, you know, just come on, get it done, you know? And it's just like, you know, it's probably just a, a thing that's probably a relatively simple thing. You know, right. but the fact that he kind of jacks into the wrong thing and just kind of screws it up, it's almost like a, some kind of distraction from yeah. the fact that, like, the blinking light was... Um, was the spec, was the uh, the phantom, like, being detached, and once the light was blinking, it meant he, they were away. Once it stopped blinking, they were, you know, they were away, and he just had to keep Hera from seeing the blinking lights, showing that the phantom was being taken. Right. I mean, she's like, you know, were they orders or more, more like her opinion? You know, it's just <laughs> like, and you know, we, and we noticed, you know, coming back to that episode where it's just like Sabine's like, you know, very, very frustrated that she's in the dark, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it's just kind of like, you know, if she, I really can't really get behind everything. So, I'm, but, you know, so I'm just kind of like, you know what, and this is kind of like, it's an opinion, it's a suggestion, it's a, <laughs> it's a recommend, but... It's a guideline rather than a rule. <laughs> you know, and it's just kind of like, you know, and I think it's just like, you know, and if it's for the greater good, it's okay to break the rule. Right. You know, and... Sometimes you gotta break the rules. And that's really makes her furious later. Oh, yeah, that look on her face when she found them was, was hilarious, especially, like, 
you see the the backs of Zeb and and Sabine, and you're like, well, why are their backs to? And then you then they divide, they split, and there's Hera just looking intensely furious, like, uh oh, yeah. mom got mom caught us. <laughs> I mean, I love I love Vanessa Marshall's acting, and, and of course the animation. It's just mm-hmm. the way that Hera just like, you know, what are you up to? Just, just very suspicious, and just right. all the movements and the little things that are not doing these simple things, like you know, I mean, not I don't know how simple it is, but like you know, fixing the targeting system. It's like you know, what are you doing? You're kind of, you know, maybe not that hard, and you know, what are you up to? Just kind of suspicious, and you know, and not all of them. Like Zeb doesn't really have a clue generally what Zeb, what Chopper's saying, but you know, I think Sabine and like Hera can always kind of pick up something. I think. You know, so I think in this episode we just have a lot of characters just kind of making these, you know, kind of these different decisions, you know, and kind of, you know, kind of yeah. their their character arc is definitely, you know, you know these. I think yeah, a lot of these characters we're, we're having a character that. arc, you know, near their end. So yeah, we definitely see that there's a lot of character development going on, and uh, it's moving both their storylines and the plot along really, really well. Right. And like we mentioned before, this this torture is kind of going to the next level. And it's like, and I just love, you know, some of the best lines are from the Inquisitor. <laughs> you know, I mean, you are no doubt unaware. I know, I know yeah. it's wrong. <laughs> you know, and it's just, um, it's just great. Um, pain and a he Jedi delivers them so well, and that's Jason Isaacs. You know, it's just like Jedi pain. Still feels pain. A Jedi yeah. still feels pain. I mean, oh, that going. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, Jason Isaacs just does such an amazing job with that voice. And pain can break anyone, you know. It's just like we can just go on and on. I think, you know, I exactly. Think, I think in the future when we have like when we look back at some of these seasons, I think some of his lines are definitely going to be some of the top, you know, in the, you know, in the oh, ser- yeah. in this series. So, um, and probably among Absolutely. probably among a lot of the films, which is a pretty bold thing to say. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we shall see we shall see you know so you will tell and then you know another thing is you know because they're not quite sure i mean i guess i'm kind of surprised that i mean i think the inquisitor you know is one of the few people that is kind of like almost convinced that Caden is a jedi you know because even he said you know the padawan and the ma- master or no or was that the oh no no wait right. that was that or was that callus i can't remember that was the thing. Yeah, it was callous. Yeah. Okay. I think I don't think that the Inquisitor has any doubt because he's gone up against Kanan several times, and he knows what who he's fighting. He knows it's a Jedi. Um, I just think that Grand Moff Tarkin is in denial a bit. You know, so, and, I mean, and even in you know, in A New Hope, it's like you know, you were all left to their religion. You know, my old friend. Yeah. You know, and right. Quote, he's like, no. You know, and I think it's interesting the Inquisitor is trying to, you know, I mean, of course, there's like, you know, the Jedi does these mind probes that don't really work on Jedi, you know, and, and then he's trying to kind of <laughs> use, you know, use the force. And it's not really quite working either, you know, and Ken is like, you know, I can tell you're frustrated, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> you know, and I think it's just really nice. And, yeah, that was a great moment. You know, I mean, of course it's not. Moment. I mean, of course it's not. I sense you're frustrated. You know, I mean, I mean, the Inquisitor really had no chance. You know, I mean, I still remember. No. You know, I still He's remember. He's not a Jedi. Yeah, I mean, I still remember. Um, what was it? What's the bounty hunter's name? I'm blanking out from Clone Wars. Um, uh, blanking out. What is his name? Oh, you know, he's one with the one with the tubes. Uh, yeah, it's killing me. Cad Bane. Cad Bane. Yeah, I mean, Cad really, Bane. you know, because really he couldn't. He could, you know, fend off one Jedi mind, but it was, but when all three of them were kind of ganging up on, then he started to break. You know, and so it's not just Jedi that right. can yeah. that can kind of keep it out, or not just like few Force users. It's other people who have a strong will. Right. You know, it's like Jedi mind tricks work on the weak minded, not the. You you don't have to be a Jedi. You know. To kind of make it work. And we know, of course, that, you know, lightning is not... Oh, wait, were you going to say... No. Okay. I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, that lightning is never good for a Jedi, you know, because it's really... 
really one of those things that, you know, a Jedi have really been, are kind of against, you know, using Force Lightning. And, of course, in this case, an actual machine versus the Sith are kind of, they're fine yeah. using electricity to, to induce pain, you know. Right, right. But the Jedi... You know, it's like, you know, we don't want to kill them. You know, it's just kind of... That's probably the few things they can't defend against is that force. Like, uh, like they wanted information, so we don't know how, exactly how how much they tortured him with the love. You know. Yeah, so, of course, we kind of... Ezra says, you know, we're kind of desperate, so we're going to go um, check out this, I guess... I'm not really sure. Was he, like, a smuggler or a bounty hunter? I'm not sure. Or a, um, or a pirate? I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, he's a member of, of, of the Lothal underworld. Oh, that's it's right. It's of the Broken Horn Syndicate. And um, so they're like the mobsters. So it's like a smuggler, like a pirate, they're out for their own gain. So if Vizago. they happen to help someone by accident. Yeah. Yeah, Sicatra Vizago. Right. He's a Devronian. And I love that species <laughs> ever since the, we saw the first one in the cantina in a new hope. I was like, Oh, that guy's so cool looking. Um, but yeah, so they have to go to him and they have, Ezra has to make a deal to give to help him do something right. in exchange for information I mean, on how to, you know, where Canaan is or how to get to Canaan. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that the kind of the rebels have kind of, you know, they made their announcement and stuff. So now a lot of people know, and it's kind of like, you kind of just, What's the kind of like, I don't want to associate with you guys. You guys are bad trouble. You guys are trouble, you know, for business and all sorts of other stuff. You know, I think that's kind of a common thing, you know. You knocked out the, yeah. I mean, I think if they're going through like a marketplace or something, I think I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people kind of gave them a cold shoulder and kind of just ignored them or kind of stared at them or something or kind of like bringing the child in or something that, you know, don't look at them or, you know what I mean? Just kind of, right. even if they're, kind of sharing some hope they still are afraid to associate themselves with these people especially when it's such a small oh, yeah. group yeah absolutely yeah. but yeah it's right. like um this 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 guy's like you know within re you know with something within reason you know because but he's just no no deal i mean they just <laughs> like you know you gotta say like anything and i think it's interesting that it's like you know a jedi will owe you something right. which is pretty Kind of big, and of course, Harry definitely gets mad at that. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like yeah. I just love when they go into the ship. They they go into the broken horn, and uh, he uh, Vizago bows, and, and <laughs> or Ezra does not know what to do, so he kind of like grabs his ear. Yeah, I was like, his horn, yeah, he's like, like, it's yeah. like. <laughs> He's like giving him like scratches. Supposed to rub your head for good luck. Yeah, I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, I, I had I had the same thought that he was like giving him like an ear scratch or something because he kind of he was kind of pretty close to him and he kind of was kind of put his ear kind of in the. I mean, I think unfortunately, I mean the species just his ears kind of point that way when he kind of bows. Unfortunately, so right. Um, you know, He's so like, what are you doing? We bow to show we have a deal. <laughs> Right. And then Ezra bows and he bows too much. He's like, you're just trying too hard. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't overdo it, you know. I mean, I think yeah. it's interesting that, you know, like he really had to see to believe that, you know, Kanan was a, I mean, you know, Kanan was kind of a, a Jedi because, you know, because after Ezra showed him using the Force, you know, he's kind of, it's kind of a see to believe mm -hmm. thing because it's still kind of, you know, because we know that, you know, by now that Jedi are this you know, kind of this rumor about kind of the bad, quote unquote, bad stuff they did and all sorts of stuff. And it's just kind of like, you know, uh, no, no way, no way. It's, it's no way. I'm, I'm just as, you know, you're, you might as well be a Jedi just like him. You know, he's like, you know, I am. Right. You know, um, and I think it's interesting that he kind of, he's kind of not really wanting to trust people. So I think it's kind of not unusual for him to kind of to tell other, other people, to stay behind, you know. Right. And I really and I really dig the ship's design. I mean it's almost like this almost like this moss that's like surrounding the ship. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> you know, and unfortunately he doesn't give, you know, Ezra a lot of like some kind of possibilities and maybes and you know, wasn't what not quite right. what they were looking for. But know? they did figure out that the way to find the way to get up to where Kanan was, was to kidnap one of those droids because that's how they were collecting information since the calm tower went out. Yeah. 
out. So that they did find that out. You know, it's just like, um, you know, it's just, it's just they take data from the city up to their communication ships in orbit and data and it's any really anything. Also, I mean, all sorts of stuff. I mean, we saw that, you know, um, when um, Zebo kind of had that Lobot kind of implant thing, it showed a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. And I think something like this kind of shows some similar things, I bet. Yeah, and it makes sense to entrust a droid because, I mean, they're not going to tell anybody. And then I thought it was really cool, a really good idea that they disguised Chopper as one of those droids so that they had a way up there. So they at least could track Chopper and see where he was. Yeah, you know, it's just like, and I think I'm definitely glad that Ezra kind of was like, yeah, I, I have a plan because, you know, Hera was like really mad. And she wanted like some some kind of thing because not really didn't really get a whole lot out of it. And I think it's good that he kind of had this plan. And, and hopefully she he thought that you know maybe he thought ahead that someone would be really mad and kind of kind of had this kind of plan because we can't really take a whole lot of action with this this info, you know, without right. some other kind of plan. So I think it's it's good. You know, and of course we get um, another look at a Imperial shuttle, which is always great. I loved how it docked. I just thought that was so cool. Yeah, that was definitely different because um, usually we've only we've seen them like completely, like the wings completely go up. I don't think we've seen one do like this the way it did here. No, it, usually it it flies into a, a a landing dock or landing bay, and that's inside the ship. This one just kind of. Came up, kind of became a part of the ship. And oftentimes, it's in, really and cool. oftentimes it's in space that it does that. Yeah. You know, so um, I think it's interesting that it's like you know the Empire kind of just doesn't really they kind of see these droids as just droids. They don't really pay attention to what kind of droid it is, what age or anything like that. It's just like you know they won't know the difference. Give them a paint job. You know, I mean right. even if you didn't change. That's cha- the brilliant thing about droids. I mean even if you didn't change. Even if you didn't make it look like it, I mean, unless, I mean, I'm guessing the stormtroopers and no one really knew what chop, what the droid looked like anyway. I mean, I think it's good that, I think Chopper by, Chopper by himself is a little suspicious because he really looks old. But I think if, as long as you were to like paint him something to make him look a little more modern, I think they would have just wrote off. I mean, they're kind of like, where's his escort? Oh, forget it. We don't have time. Yeah, that's the thing. The great thing about using a droid is because they do fly under the radar and they do get ignored. It's like, oh look, it's a droid. Or if even if they even say that, it's just like so natural for droids just to be going everywhere. You know, it's like in a, a New Hope. He's like, move. you know, like in a New Hope, he's kind of like, you might catch them. You know, if you if you go down, you might catch them <laughs> and just like stay here. You know, and or like it's like um, you know all sorts of other things. Or like on in on. Um, you know, on indoor was just like, come on, bring those two droids down here. You know, it's just like, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's got, like, you know, they're interchangeable to, they're just, they're not paid any credence. They're just interchangeable. And, oh, look, it's a droid. Nobody says, oh, that's an R2D, you know, that's an astromech, this blah, 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 blah. That's R5D4. Or that's, you know, R4. Um, they just see a droid. And that's why using them is really brilliant. Yeah, it's kind of like you know what you know. Let's put you, question let's, a droid. You know, let's put you to work. You know, you can do something. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's funny that you know um, that you know the this droid kind of he's almost like he was like really scared of Zeb, so he just kind of like whined and then he just like fell over. I thought that was really mm-hmm. I thought that was really funny. He just like faint. It was almost like a yeah. a droid's version of fainting. Yeah, I really like this this little guy i thought he was really cool and he he did he did help them and i thought oh maybe we're gonna get chopper a friend maybe we're gonna have two droids on the ghost and i was like oh yeah no and maybe not not happening and maybe not the little sibling rivalry little jealousy on chopper's part nope there goes uh there goes the new droid uh what was it that down there to play with the local cats (laughs) You know, what did what is Sabine? I think Sabine was the one that said, like, uh, calm down, little guy. That's that's what I'm looking at. We're not going to hurt you. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of Sabine. I think it was, like, Sabine's idea uh, to get rid of 
the droid. And at least, I mean, at least, like, she was the one that gave the signal to someone. But I think it was almost like, we're not going to hurt you until we get Chopper back. You know, more like, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like, oh. Know. They were all kind of bonding over it when uh, Chopper came back. And that's when Chopper said, yeah, no. Okay. Gonna, so, yeah, maybe it was Chopper's idea. Maybe it was Chopper's idea. <laughs> you know, and just, it could have been working with Sabine, but I, I was like, they lie. I would have been like, you said nothing would happen to me. <laughs> and then he gets to play with the big, with the little kitty cats. Yeah, I mean, I like how, you know, like this, like Chopper can kind of like, kind of go under the radar and kind of, and, and you know, sometimes and I think luckily, you know, I mean, I think some of these versus stormtroopers, um, the Imperial officers are a bit more observant to like something a droid is doing, you know, they always say, Oh, what are you doing? You're uh, copying all these files and stuff, you know, and it's just yeah. like, and of course he just, he doesn't really suspect he's like a spy or something. He just said, this droid is a uh, malfunctioning, you know, he's just kind <laughs> of, he's just, there's just something in him that's kind of like doing this other thing, just some random thing. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, that was really fun. And also this is, uh, this officer, um, he's done a lot of anime roles. Not, not recently, but, um, I know him best from the 2004 um, thriller uh, anime Monster, which is which I highly recommend to anybody. <laughs> Even if you don't like anime, I highly recommend it. Um, no, if the if the humor is what bothers you, none of that. Um, but um, so that's kind of cool, and it's just like you know what is this? And they kind of look at this model number, and they're like, what is you know? It's kind of like. <laughs> You know, it looks like an older model. Yeah, you think? Just just a little. If you would have seen him before, yeah, definitely. I'll check yeah. his encryption codes. I mean, if it even, you know, has anything that's even encryption codes that even will, are compatible or that they can even check, they'll be like, it could be just a completely outdated code that they can't even read, you know, who knows? Right. Um... I mean, I think it's cool that it's just like, when they're in the ship, you know, I think it's cool that now Ezra, you know, because Kanan's gone, Ezra's able to take, con you know, kind of control. I mean, he was kind of a leader in this, and being able to use the turret was definitely cool. Um, So I think it's cool that it's just kind of, and I think it's interesting that almost like the droid, this droid, this new droid was almost very, very compliant in helping them out. Um, So, yeah, it's just interesting that it's just like, this droid is just, you know, even though he's kind of original with the Empire, he's kind of like, you know what, I don't really care, you know, I mean, and, it's, and we have no evidence that they did any kind of reprogramming. It's just like, he just kind of switches sides just like that, and he's kind of like, he's putting out the fire, and of course Zeb isn't really helping a whole lot, he's just like putting out the fire, and versus Ezra who's kind of doing a lot more, so. Right, Zeb's just lighting things on fire, you know, but Ezra. I think... Zeb started the fire. And, and then the, I think the droid was just like, he's like, well, I guess I'm with these people now. <laughs> what do you need me to do? He's just like, does whatever the humans tell him to do. And I think I like that Ezra kind of give him like, um, I hope Chop is, you know, kind of give him the little nickname Chop. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and of course, Chopper kind of makes his escape. And we're not, not surprisingly, Zoom Troopers were in the wrong place. And the airlock, and then they go, boom. And it's just like this silent, just like, whoosh, and then you see like four stormtroopers just going to their death. Yeah. I mean, granted, we have seen clone troopers um, be out in the vacuum of space for a time, but unfortunately, I don't think there's, they're not really worth rescuing, and I think they're eventually just going to run out of oxygen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and of course, I think Chopper was definitely cool that we see another instance of him like firing his um his um booster kind of yeah uh, what do you call it i'm not really sure i just call it his jetpack you know it's a, and it's a bit different from <laughs> r2's much less sophisticated r2's were like on his on the like his feet you know and they were different uh, choppers is like under him <laughs> it's you like know, on his main body yeah you know, and yeah and it was almost like this like rocket you know, on Chopper versus R2, where it was some other kind of special thing that was being fired. Or it wasn't... Yeah. You know, I don't even know if it had an, really an exhaust. Or maybe it did, like, that was really small. Yeah, we just never saw it. You no, know, I think it was cool that it's just like, you know, Chopper, you were awesome. And it's just kind of like... They just are seeing that, like, Chopper's, like, flying in and um, kind of, like, you know... And then, then the bottom kind of opens and he gets up and he kind of just reaches with his arm and trying to stretch, trying to grab it. 
Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, and they kind of like, and of course Zeb is kind of like, earlier he was like, and I'm starting to like this new droid better, and so, <laughs> you know. And then that's when Chopper's like, you know what, let's just get rid of them. They all kind of smile, and he's, and in parentheses with Chopper, it says angrily chittering <laughs> around the, um, um, one, when he's, uh, oh. 137 mark. Yeah. So... And um, and then he kind of goes yeah, and then like I think the percent I think the uh, the sub for this droid is yowls, <laughs> you know. Then there he goes, and he's just like, and then Zeb is like, I should have seen that coming. Yeah, he really should have. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to think if I have any other notes on this thing. Um, so yeah, um, I know we got some other musical cue. Was it the Force theme when it, when he lifted up the case? I, I, I'm i pretty sure it was. It was, yeah. You know, and I think we might have gotten some other few themes. Um, but I think it was really at the beginning that was really the most apparent. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think uh, Chopper, like, speeding through the space, but kind of, kind of, the sound was kind of reminding me of, like, Wally, Wally's <laughs> sound when he's flying through space. Yeah. And I, I'm glad the I'm glad we got to see the this droid land safely on the ground. Yeah, we, we he didn't get broken up by falling to low fall. And we also didn't see them jumping on and going on for a ride. The little cats, you know. Right. So, um, so uh, like Harris said, you know, you you stepped up, and Kane has taught you well. So, and um, Kane is on a destroyer. The Sovereign, Tarkin's Destroyer, the Sovereign, and um, they said it's scheduled to leave soon to Mustafar system, which is another mm. connection to the prequels. So. It's where Jedi go to die. You know, so, and it's just some kind of rumor not many people know about it, you know. Right, but they know enough that that's where we last saw Anakin. Right, so now we have the to be continued, which uh, we did have one at the halfway point for this season. So yeah, we did. So so okay. this is to the last episode of the season. Yep. So any final thoughts? A uh, strong, strong episode. I love seeing Tarkin. I love the chopper and the the old chopper, new chopper, kind of dynamic. With just those, uh, just chopper. I love chopper. Um. Lot a good amount of humor, but I think it moved the story along really well, and I'm just really want to see what happens on Monday. I agreed. I mean, I think really the last the, episode. I mean, the stakes have definitely been raised, and I do wonder um, how Chopper will go back to his old color. I don't. Does that paint come off easily? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to come off. I think they'll Sabine's figure it out. Kind of, Sabine's kind of an expert in these things. Yeah, she'll take care of him. Okay. We'll get our old orange chopper back. Yeah, old rusty chopper that's, who knows how how old he is. <laughs> you know, it's probably, you know. He's probably about R2's age. Yeah. Who knows, maybe as old as Yoda. Maybe not that old. <laughs> you never know. I mean, so, I mean, that chopper kind of reminds me of, you know, sort of a droid we saw in KOTOR, but that's a different topic completely. <laughs> so let's not go down that road. Okay. Uh, um, okay. So yeah. Um, so where can people find us? If they want to. Well, we are on Twitter at Radio Free Indoor and on Facebook at Radio uh, Facebook dot com slash Radio Free Indoor. You can find Jonathan at J E Bell Forty Nine er on Twitter, and you find me at I Heart Colson on Twitter. Yep, and uh, Agents of Shield is about to about to start back yes. up. So yes. Ha- halfway. I'm excited. So. Halfway yeah, mid season they... premiere. Yep, halfway through season two, so I'm yeah I'm all caught up, and I think it'll be like one of the first times I'll be all caught up. So oh, awesome. So, yep, and uh, of course leave us a review on iTunes if you haven't already. Um, also check out all the other Southgate Media podcasts. I forget how many we I think we're close to sixty or something, um, including my anime podcast Radio Ramen, which um, we're reviewing Dura Dura. So that's always cool, which is a lot of fun with uh, my co-host Rachel and. Uh, lots of other stuff kind of going on, so uh, if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, I think that's about it, and uh, we'll try to get, we'll try to, um, in addition to getting back to some Radio Free Indoor, um, I'd like to also maybe do some special things, like maybe some kind of 
some kind of book or comic review or something or a look back on Clone Wars you know, while Rebel Cast is on hiatus. I'd like to, you know, do something or maybe uh, I'd like to definitely like to do some kind of commentary on the saga. So look, for, look absolutely for, look for something like that, and we'll definitely. And if you have, if they, anybody has any suggestions, stuff they want to hear us do, you know, let us know on Twitter or Facebook. Oh yeah, and yeah, and also post any kind of thoughts you have on Facebook, any thoughts you have on. You know, Rebels this season or the current episode, and we'll read them on the show. So, okay, um, and I think definitely we'll we'll definitely be getting on the next on the finale. I promise you, we will get at least one guest. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> who knows? Maybe two. Um, because um, so yeah, because you know, because if we miss a week, then we won't be behind because it'll right. be over. So, okay, um, so this was Rebels guys on the Southgate Media Group, and. Um, and if you want to donate to them, go to the website and check out all their sponsors and along with all sorts of other things. 